6560511. Coming to you. It's time for Region 9 action in tonight's Boulevard home game of the week on the Fan Sports Network. Yes, live at Dixie High School. It's the Flyers home court tonight, the hangar. And we've got a crosstown rivalry as the Snow Canyon Warriors come in to this building. Both teams have high hopes and deep run playoff implications all over this game tonight. Two teams very well coached. Both teams have star power tonight. Devin Dixon, Casey Winters, and I'm fired up for a Wednesday night showdown, Casey. Yeah, you couldn't ask for anything better midweek uh, on a Wednesday night. You know, we're getting down to kind of the end of that first round of region play. Teams are still seeing each other for the first time. So this is uh, definitely a matchup we've been looking forward to all season long. Boulevard home game of the week. Want to officially welcome you into our pregame show built by Bucks Ace Hardware. And we are ready to go here tonight. And of course, uh, we're going to get you here inside our pregame show. We're going to get you uh, the keys to the game. We're going to pick an X factor for each team and uh, start breaking this game down from every single angle. Dixie enters the RPI at number two, 12 and three, but they enter the Des News 4A rankings at number one. I keep waiting for the Des News to do their all classification top 25 to see where Dixie's going to yeah, be. Yeah, someone's someone has done that. I've seen one. I believe they were number four. So I think you had like a corner canyon. You had Alta um, and one other school, you know, right there with them. But, you know, we've seen through the preseason that Dixie, I believe, is just as good as anybody in the state. We saw them, you know, take Wasatch Academy to a three-point game last Tuesday night. And so, you know, definitely, I, I don't think anybody is uh, underestimating what Dixie can do. I think they, they have earned respect and they have a target on their back, especially down here in Region 9. Well, and let's put that into context. If you're listening, you're like, oh, they played Wasatch Academy. Wasatch Academy is not in 4A. They're not in 5A. They're not in 6A. They're, they're number eight in the nation when Dixie played them. Dixie was down double digits last Tuesday, came back to take the lead late in the fourth quarter, had a shot with about 35, 40 seconds to win it, just couldn't get the job done, lost by three. I think with that win and maybe another one, I think Wasatch is now up to number five, if I'm not mistaken, in the nation. So Dixie proven they can play with anybody. Yeah, and, and that's where, you know, you look at the RPI and things like that. You know, they're 12 and three. Well, who are their three losses to, right? Wasatch Academy, a really good team in the championship at the Damien Classic down in California. Uh, so, you, you know, you look at that and you're like, okay, their three losses are maybe different than some other people. Uh, but at the end of the day, right, when you look at it, you still have to win games, right? And so Snow Canyon, I bet they're looking at it, you know, like, hey, we have as good a team as anybody, good as chance as anybody to come in and, and knock um, – Dixie off. We've had a lot of conversations, right? Is Dixie going to run the table in Region 9? So far they have. Uh, you know, they had a tough game at Pineview the other night. They have a tough game tonight. They play Desert Hills on Friday. So this is kind of the meat of that first round. Um, and like, like we've mentioned several times, they're taking everybody's best shot. And Owen Mackey has as good a chance as, as anybody to put his team on his back and, and knock off the Flyers. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. You see the Flyers getting loose right now. We're about to, less than 12 minutes away from the starting lineups in the introductions. Devin Dixon, Casey Winters. Free game brought to you in part by Fabulous Freddy's, home of the Unlimited Car Wash Club. $9.99 a month for new customers for a limited time. And you always get 20 cents off per gallon gas with every car wash. So join the club and you get big gas savings at your two Southern Utah Fabulous Freddy's. Also appreciate Finley Subaru on the saving side of the freeway. Go see the all-star lineup. Maybe get a new car and then join the car wash club to keep it clean <laughs> all year long. We love our sponsors. You see Kyle Limke down in the paint working on a baby left hook right now. What do you see from Kyle Limke averaging 21 and a half points per game? One of the top scorers in all the land of 4A. Man, I'm, I'm glad I graduated high school about 20 years ago because he is just about unguardable. I mean, you look at, at what he did against Pineview. He had 29. Uh, struggled a little bit in the first half, but as soon as he can get his rhythm, uh, you know, teams that have fronted him uh, have had a tough time because Dixie's such a good passing team and have such good shooters on the perimeter, it's hard to help off. Teams have tried doubling him. He makes good plays. So, you know, I think Snow Canyon has as much size as anybody with Aloha and Campbell, but... 
Powell's pro proven that he's the best lead, uh, best big in the league and capable of having a big night every time he steps on the floor. Yeah, Kyle Lemke, you say you going to go to the locker room, get a little uh, little timeout, warm-ups getting close in the books. Probably not done. He'll probably get a few more shots. There's Jordan Roberts. Last week, he was not leading the nation, but after last week's games, he did take over the number one spot in the nation, 11.1 assists per game. That's top, tops and max preps across the entire country. How about that for Jordan yeah, Roberts? That's impressive, you know, and, and, you know, especially where assists are a little underrated sometimes when you're looking at stats and blocks and steals. But uh, also set the Utah State 19. record, 19 assists in a game. And, and let me preface that. They have, to, they have to send the film in, and that has to be documented when it's a yeah. record like that. And how, how about the Dixie statistics spot on with 19 and the yeah, UHSAA and, approved that? I mean, that's that's John Stockton-esque, right? I mean, there's not very many people. I mean, you look at a stat sheet at the end of the season, there's not very many players that will go an entire season with 19 assists, and he did it in one game. Very impressive. And, and I asked him, like, who do you emulate? He's like, I love Allen Iverson. I've had people tell me, you know, I, I play a lot like Steve Nash. Um, you know, it's probably a compilation of a lot of guys. I haven't seen a high school point guard – throw the lead passes at, he's like a quarterback I mean somebody should have told him to play quarterback for playing Munkers because the way he throws those outlet passes pinpoint on a bounce pinpoint on a dead line clothesline down the court that gets them fast break points that gets him assists and that get, even secondary passes are pinpoint from Jordy Roberts yeah and the one thing I like about Jordan is he's he'll he'll try to sneak one in right he's throwing the hard pass and if he turns it over it's not a big deal right and he just keeps trying to make plays he had two passes at Pineview that were you know post routes that he fed right in there one to Brecken Robinson and one to Logan Whitehour but he did a really really good job of, of just getting his eyes up seeing the court and then he's not afraid to make a pass you can see the captains there's Owen Mackey in the middle with Trey Kelch yep. and company how about Omac? he's already had two 35 point games in his last three outings he missed three games due to an ankle sprain uh, th th this kid, what can't he do? He has been so sensational, as smooth a player as we've seen come through Region 9, and, and such a humble, good kid. Already committed to John Judkins at Utah Tech. Yeah, I saw Juddy walk in just a second ago, and uh, I was having a conversation with, with a buddy the other day, and we were kind of talking about Owen, and, and I think he's all-time Region 9. You know, when you talk about, you know, the last 20, 25 years of player that for his sophomore year, junior year, senior year, that – has the capability to do what he does finish to the rim get above the rim play defense make tough shots make threes uh, game winners whatever it is I mean Owen definitely is has left his mark on on region 9 and, and Utah high school basketball no, no question our X factor tonight for snow cannon is Owen Mackey they did throw the kitchen sink at him every time he plays he's gonna get double teamed you know if he gets the ball in the post he might even see a triple team uh, on occasion um, you know I thought Pineview did a really good job throwing everything at him and, and we'll see Dixie do the same they did that last year it's interesting Owen Mackey and Jordy Roberts here in the hangar last year got in a little duel <laughs> Mackey was a game high 31. Jordy dropped 29. Yeah. And when they went back for the rematch at Snow Canyon, Mackey only had a 21 point performance, but the supporting cast was good, and they won that game when he had less points. And, Dev, I think you hit it right on the head. I think it's going to be, we, we know Owen's going to play, and even if he doesn't have a, a great night, he's still going to be, you know, 18, 19, 20 points. I think the key is going to be who's that next guy that steps up. And when I look at Snow Canyon warming up right here, and my, my first thought and my eye is drawn to Trey Kelch because Trey does such a good job. I think he's one of the defenders that can give Jordy Roberts some problems because he's so quick and he's just a bulldog. Uh, but he can also hit some threes. You know, is it going to be Owen Aloha? Is it going to be uh, Campbell? Is it going to be Dre Smith? Is it going to be Reggie Mackey? So who's, I think, you know, Snow Canyon's got to get three, four guys to double figures, you know, and, and really support each other and not completely rely on Owen to just put him on his back and carry him. Owen Mackey averaging 23 points per game. He's second in 4A only behind uh, Nash Schroeder and Logan's Jordan Child. Uh, the Des new stats are incorrect. They got him starting in all 13 games, but if you do the math after missing three games, he's right at that 23-point mark. Yeah. Third in 4A. Limke just a, a spot below him at 21.5. So they're neck and neck, and those are going to be our fin Finley Subaru uh, stars to watch tonight in this game. Although we'll probably see Logan Whitehour guarding
between Mackey and a man-to-man -man defense and maybe even vice versa. Yeah, and, and you know, as I've watched Dixie play, you know, I've probably got six or seven games in right now. I've been really impressed with Logan and what he does on the on the offensive glass, on the defensive glass, who he guards, how he moves without the ball. Um, you know, when when Kyle Lemke gets a catch, it seems like it's always Logan Whitehour that's kind of trying to suck that defense in on a cut and is doing a, a good job. Uh, we, we got lots to talk about. Let's take a timeout, quick timeout, 60 second break here in our pregame show built by Bucks Ace Hardware. And when we come back, we'll get you keys to the game and closer to the starting lineup and the tip from the hangar tonight. It's Dixie and Snow Cannon on the Fan Sports Network presented by the Boulevard. Relatives coming to visit, not enough room, or maybe you're looking to host a family reunion and need a house with a pool. Well, Red Rock Vacation Rentals has got you covered. From two bedroom condos to 10 bedroom luxury homes, they truly have something for everyone. Plan your perfect getaway or staycation. Visit St. George, Utah Vacation. Rentals.com. The Fan Sports Network is your home for local sports. Catch the drive with Devin Dixon from 7 to 9. And from the bleachers with Caden Foremaster and Mark Musgrave from 4 to 6. Plus, Utah Tech and high school sports live on the radio and streaming on the Fan Sports Network.com. Oh, hello, Italian nightclub from Jimmy John's. Ciao, freshly baked bread piled with Italian style meats. Hey, hand sliced veggies. Am I obsessed with this sandwich? Yeah. So what if I am? Jimmy John's. Order online or on the app. At Intermountain Sports Performance, we've been training athletes from Logan to St. George for over 20 years. And we guarantee your athlete will improve speed, agility, explosive power, and reduce the risk of injury while working with the most qualified team in all of Utah. Call 435-251-2299 to find the local. One of our three Southern Utah locations. It's time for the pregame show on the Fan Sports Network, getting you ready for kickoff. Yeah, we are closing in on tip-off, and Devin Dixon, Casey Winters here, and we are fired up for this one. Let's take a look at our Team D Auto Sales keys to the game and start breaking this one down. First for the Snow Canyon Warriors, Casey, uh, th this is going to be important that they do a good job on the glass. That's something that they have had a little trouble with, and they definitely want to win the battle on the boards tonight. Yeah, we mentioned Kyle Lemke. We, mo we mentioned Logan Whitehour. I think with Owen Mackey and Carter Campbell and Owen Aloha, Right, they should be able to battle on the boards. Um, and I think especially, you know, we talked about defensive ones, but get some offensive boards to slow down that, that Dixie transition. I think it's important for the Flyers to, to score upwards of 65 points because they're only averaging 59.7. Dixie averages 71. Hard to think on the Flyers' home court that, that you're going to go for 80 tonight. So I, I think 65 is a good number if they can play some good defense. Got to get back on defense, limit the fast break, and the second secondary fast break that Jordy Roberts is so good at getting out and setting the tone with his passing game and his speed. Yeah, that's got to be number one on any scan report uh, that, you know, of a Dixie opponent is you got to limit their transition. And I thought Pineview did a good job of that on Friday night. You know, they still got some, but not as many as they, they normally do. Yeah, got to limit the turnovers on the road as well. For Dixie, Roberts on the flip side want to outlet, and they want to get out and run. They want to, That's a key for Coach Tyler Roberts every single night, right? They, they want to run. Yeah, they've played that way for years. They're not changing now. They're going to run and run and run, shoot early and often. Lemke, rim runner, he's so good at it. Get him going early and often. And this is something that Coach Roberts, bullet point three, said to me on the morning show, he's like, it's a lot of these guys are senior year. I want my guys to live in the moment, just have fun, enjoy it, uh, make those memories, soak it up, and obviously feed off the crowd. And Casey, we got people scrunching yeah. in around it, us. It's it going to be scanned. It, it if filled up quick. If you're not at Dixie High School yet, you better run just to yep. get a baseline seat right now because there's only about 20 seats left in the building. Yeah, it filled up quick, and it's high energy. Both student sections are great. It's going to be an exciting environment tonight. And then obviously it will be interesting to see if, you know, Lemke can get Campbell in a low and foul trouble. That's not nice luxury that you have two bigs, though. You got ten fouls to try to defend Kyle Lemke with not a lot of teams in the region have two quality bigs like Snow Canyon has. Yeah, and it's going to be by committee, by both those guys especially. But the important thing is, is just stay down. If you can block a shot going straight up, great. But don't get Kyle, you know, free buckets going and ones. Just stay on your feet. Make him make tough shots over you. Team D keys to the game. 488 East St. George Boulevard. Team D autosales.com check out their inventory online go see parker and jason the guys over there on the boulevard 
Cheerleaders gonna line up about uh, seconds away from Roger Christensen, who always does such a great job, the PA announcer here at Dixie High School, from uh, getting the guys fired up. And we're gonna have our national anthem and starting lineups here. And again, appreciate our pregame sponsors, Finley Subaru, Fabus Freddy's, and Built by Bucks Ace Hardware. It'll be spring before you know it. Go load up on everything you need for the home and the lawn at Bucks Ace Hardware 3 Southern Utah. Asphalt. It's not so. Devin Dixon, Casey Winters. We're going to take a quick timeout here for our national anthem, and then we will come back with the starting lineup and the tip. It's a theme night tonight. The Warrior student section's packed in. It's a blackout for the Warriors. They got the road blacks on. It's a whiteout for the Flyers. Like that it. seems like coordinated, it. doesn't like it? it? So we'll take our break and be right back for the starting lineups and the tip off. Dixie hosting Snow Canyon. Don't touch that dial. Asphalt. It's not something we think about much, except when it's in bad shape. At Holbrook Asphalt, we help cities, HOAs, and businesses avoid replacing painfully expensive roads and parking lots. To avoid the cost of replacing asphalt, you must effectively preserve it while it's still in good condition. University research has shown Holbrook Asphalt's HA5 slows asphalt aging by 67%. We make your pavement assets last longer, cost less to own, all while achieving higher property values. Visit HolbrookAsphalt.com to discover more. Hey, it's Sheldon Demke. Check out the latest episode of What's on the Menu, a behind-the-scenes tour of local restaurants. We'll see some of their favorite dishes and get an inside look on how these dishes are prepared. Check out this week's episode at stgeorgenews.com and click the shows on the menu tab. Adams Wealth Advisory is a financial planning firm that is combined with an investment firm to provide the best possible outcomes for our clients. I always believe if you're intentional with your financial plan, things are going to work out really well for you. Visit AdamsWealthAdvisors.com or call 752-1702 to schedule a time with an advisor today. Red Ledge is Dermatology and Med Spa, specializing in general and cosmetic dermatology, treating acne, rashes, warts, and more. They even do cancer screenings and offer a free chemical pill with your first appointment. So if you need dermatology, think Red Ledge's Dermatology, located just off Snow Canyon Parkway, St. George. When one of us gets in a car accident, we can help. At McMullen Injury Law, we make sure that problems get solved the best way possible, and we make sure that all insurance claims get paid fully and fairly so you can get back on your feet and get life back to normal. Check out this week's edition of TGIF on stgeorgenews.com. TGIF is your weekend adventure guide to all the fun and exciting things going on in southern Utah this weekend. Find this week's edition at stgeorgenews.com and click the shows on the menu tab. Have a blast this weekend. I've got 15 seconds to list all the reasons that you should call Jason Baum at Bay Equity Home Loans. First-time home buyer specialist, down payment assistant loans, investment loans other guys haven't even heard of, reverse mortgages, and so many more to name. Before we are back at the hangar at Dixie High School. Devin Dixie, Casey Winters on the Fan Sports Network and great rendition. The junior ROTC presenting our state flag and our great American flag and always get goosebumps right before tip-off, huh, big dog? Yeah, these singers, we had the guitar earlier in the season. They do a great job setting the tone for these Region 9 games. Uh, again, it's uh, a packed house here tonight. I mean, people are starting to spill into the gym and they're looking around trying to find a seat. I mean, if you scrunch, there's maybe room for 10 or 12 people in the baseline up at the top, and that's about it. I mean, for a Wednesday night, uh, Dixie does have one of the smaller gymnasiums, but this is going to be electric. There's, it's going to be loud in here. There's a lot of people here, and it's it's good. I mean, this is what you want. I mean, you know, a lot of people when you're coaching, they say, I don't like playing at Dixie or whatnot. I like it because it's always loud. It's always electric, and you always have a really good environment. Here come the starters. There's Damon Inns, the first to be introduced. House of Jump, our starting lineup sponsor. Also also sponsoring our dunk of the night. Hopefully we get it. We'll get you free one hour jump time. There is Trey Kelch. Maybe an X-Factor guy that needs to have a big game so. tonight. I think so. I think so. Especially on the defensive end, Garden Jordan Roberts. Oh, Mackey getting introduced. Here comes Carter Campbell. Aloha and Campbell have kind of been trading off who starts depending on the matchup. It'll be Campbell that gets the nod tonight from first-year coach Ryan Ball. And then also uh, uh, Smith, the other starter for the snow can. Now the Warriors are done and the lights go off. They've got 
almost like when they have the Battle of the Bell, when it's Dixie Cedar wrestling, they got the one light yeah. shining down on the D. And of course, uh, they've got a video production for the uh, pregame introductions. Uh, a lot of fun here. The, the intros just keep getting bigger, better, and stronger in Region they 9 do. moves. And I'll, I'll say, you know, as a visiting team, you hate this, right? Because you just got all pumped up, you got all excited, and now you have to wait for the home team. This is as good as it gets. You're watching the video, crowd's electric, spotlights are going. And so, like I said, this just adds. So you have the anthem, you have these amazing starting lineups, and it just builds the electricity in the building. House of Jump starters, Jordy Roberts, now Brecken Robinson introduced. And here comes Myers. And he, what, what, what a luxury. Myers and Forsey, that fifth and sixth yeah. guy. Those guys, you combine their stats, and it's like another star on the court. Well, and Damon, I think he's an unsung hero on this team. Just the loose balls, the 50-50 balls, the tips. I agree. The stills, the rebounds. He plays so hard and just does a lot of stuff that maybe doesn't show up on the highlight reel, but definitely leaves a mark on the game. Logan Whitehour, and then last but not least, Kyle Lemke who said he's a LeBron guy. He told me today that he felt like LeBron James is the greatest of all time. I okay. said, let's not get into okay. that conversation on a game day, Kyle. Yeah. And I'm still in the MJ uh, realm. With, yeah. That was my era. I will say, look, let's give him some Jokic, you know, current player, you know. He, he ranked him LeBron one, Jordan two, and then he went Kobe three. Okay. Yeah, yeah you, you got an argument. Both, yeah. Yeah, you got an argument. Uh, pleasantries exchange again these two teams split their games last year both the home teams winning it'll be carter campbell to jump it up and tip off tonight brought to you by intermountain sports performance there is no not, no off season get sports specific training they got a location inside nets on fire the original location intermountain uh, st george hospital there and of course they got five statewide utah locations from st george to logan yeah, do a great job a lot of these kids probably train at acceleration Absolutely coming up through, especially these seniors and upperclassmen. Let's put eight on the clock, jump it up, and Campbell wins the tip. We are underway. Warriors working left to right on your radio dial. Again, we welcome in our radio audience on the Fan Sports Network. If you want to watch this game, go to thefansportsnetwork.com or our YouTube page to search the Fan Sports Network. Flyers, a tip and a steal by Jordy Roberts. Widenauer is going to drive the baseline, reverse lane, got us, and the Flyers score first. And that's Logan Whiter. I don't know how many times I've seen him make that move and comment how great he is at driving the baseline and getting to that reverse left-handed finish. That's got to be his, his go-to move. Whitehour scores the first two of the night, and he's got the assignment to guard Owen Mackey. Mackey gets it, drives to the middle, stop, pop, little eight-footer. Got it, nothing but the bottom. And... <laughs> I mean, we've seen that time and time again from Owen Mackey. Just one, two dribble pull up. Not very many guys are going to be able to affect because he has such a high uh, jump and a high release on that on that little jumper. Baby left hook. Limpke doing work in the low block. And a quick two for Mr. Limpke rocking the mustache. All of Mr. Timmy at Gonzaga. Kind of looks like his stash, doesn't it, Casey? Yeah, yeah, I think he's still got a little Timmy tribute going on, especially when he throws down a dunk. Shot no, Campbell grabs it, whips it to the middle to Kelch. There's a deep three, back iron, ricochets no good, tipped out of bounds, it'll be Dixie basketball. Good job by Carter Campbell though on the glass there, really doing a good job, especially on that first one, getting the board and trying to create an opportunity on the second one. 4-2 on our Wilkinson South sliding scoreboard. Keeping track of this game. Also, throughout the game, we'll have our Nets on Fire score updates from the other two games. You got Cedar Pineview and Hurricane Crimson tonight. We'll keep you up to date. Drop it inside to Lemke. Lemke backs his way down. Now goes to the drop step and missed it from the left side with the right hand. Rebound Kelch. Kelch wants to push ahead. Kelch lobs it to the corner on a whip pass. Crossover dribble. Mid-range jumper. Got it, Mr. Ooh, Ince. Silky smooth crossover there by Damon Ince. Great move on the baseline. 4-4, four, four. we're all tied up early on. J-Rob, finger roll, got it in a foul. Ooh. A little crafty move by Jordy Roberts himself right there, a little up and under. Getting a little bit of harm for the and one. Yeah, momentum there. You can see Carter Campbell just with the body there after it was released. And chance for the two and one here as Jordy Roberts heads to the fabulous Freddy's free throw line. We keep an eye on. Mackey and Lemke, our Finley Subaru star watch tonight. Both have opened up with one field goal on one attempt. 
Roberts converts the three-point play. 7-4 Dixie, our early scorer here at the hangar. And a steal for a second. And then they do get it anyway. Last touch by the Warriors. Yeah, just a little miscommunication there on that uh, pass to Owen Mackey. He wasn't quite ready for it. That was one of our team D keys to the game. Got to limit the turnovers. Limit the turnovers. Warriors already have two early ones. We'll see if this limit, they can limit the points here off the turnovers. Nope, they can't. Lemke right hand this time. And that was all set up by Jordan Roberts. You know, he demands enough attention coming off that screen that Carter Campbell has to help. And then his late recovering back to Kyle as he as he passes to him. Robinson nearly had a steal from the blind side. It's tipped around and Entz has it. Over to Omak. Mackey now guarded by Lemke. How about that? You don't see Lipke shoot the three or defend the wing, but he can with his length. And Mackey's going to take the three and miss it, but a nice offensive rebound by Trey Kelch. Trying to dribble out of traffic and reset with a fresh shot clock. Good job by Trey right there. He'll lob it down low to Campbell. Off the block, whip it, and reach foul on Roberts. Fouling Ince. Yeah, I good, think it'll be on the floor. Yeah, good cut by Damon right there. Carter was probably a few feet off his comfort zone where he was going to make a move. Great off-ball cut right there by Damon. Coach Ball told me this morning when he joined me on the morning show on the Fan Sports Network that he loves the way his guys are coming into this game with confidence, and there's a confident shot from yeah. Omak for a Cash Valley Bank triple. Silky smooth from Owen Mackey. He's got a quick five of the seven Warrior points. It's nine to seven. Whitehour straightaway three, but an offensive rebound controlled by Dixie. Roberts over to Robinson, drives in, scores it. Brecken Robinson, his first two of the night. And on both sides of the, the court, we're seeing extra possessions, right, through offensive rebounding. Both coaches are got to be frustrated at the, the ability to not get the defensive rebound. Beautiful backdoor cut. Mackey lays it up and in on a reverse lay, and he's got seven of the Warriors' nine. Meanwhile, four different Flyers have scored. Lemke, the only one with multiple field goals right now. Roberts wants one, and he can't miss the runner. Or he does miss the runner, I should say. Two-point lead, Dixie, but Snow Canyon chance maybe with a triple to take the lead for the first time tonight. Coach Ball. Coach Roberts told me it's, 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 it's a chess match. He's watching a lot more film because he's got all these new coaches and he's got to strategize a little <laughs> bit more because he doesn't know exactly for what sure. to, to expect. For sure. Yeah, with four new coaches in the region, you, you're not sure what they're running. Everything's a little bit different. Foul as Inns try to reverse land on a back cut. And, the th you know, I, I go back to the Pineview Snow Canyon game. You see the Holbrook asphalt replay, and we're hoping for the big score dessert tonight so everybody can head to Yogurt Land for some free yogurt. Way too much energy, you know, as you watch them. They're, they're in a full sweat, but I think that's why you see Pineview playing the way they are. They're playing hard. There's just a, a different energy, right? And you look at Coach Ball, he's a fiery guy, keeps these guys playing hard all game long. Free throw is good from the Fabulous Freddy's free throw line. One more coming for Ince. He's got three now. Looking for point number four from the charity stripe. Tyson Forsey in the game for the Flyers and Reggie Mackey in the game for the Warriors. And both free throws are good. A lot of fun for Owen and Reggie, senior and sophomore, to get Absolutely. to play together before Owen goes on a mission and then comes back right here to St. George to play for John Judkins at Utah Tech. Some sophomore learning curves, though, for Reggie. Yeah. Logan Whitehour with that, the nip There's move. that lefty reverse again. He's so good at that move. Whitehour's got four. Mac, Mackey, Reggie, they've, they've actually given him a little run in JV lately just to try to get him back within the flow of the game, get his confidence back up, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, he played well. I was here earlier. He played well. And a... Wide hour breakaway, maybe altered by Aloha. Kelch tracks it down, and Coach Ball gets a timeout awarded to the Snow Canyon bench. And we're entertained. 2.54 left in the first quarter on the Nets on fire clock, 13 to 11. Dixie has the lead. We'll take a quick 30 second timeout and be right back. This cheesesteak is so freshly grilled, you could still hear it sizzling. I can hear it too. Me too. Actually, it's the. Oh, cheesesteak? Grilled. Real right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. 
First Ace Hardware is conveniently located in St. George on the corner of Bluff Street and St. George Boulevard with 30,000 square feet of lawn and garden, paint, tools, fabrics, sporting goods, and the most complete nut and bolt section in town. First General Store, the big Ace store on Bluff and on May 33, 644-2423 for one hour free jump time. Yeah, welcome back everybody to the Hangar our Boulevard home game of the week for 50 years, making your house more like home. Devin Dixon, Casey Winters here in the broadcast booth. Cannon Seacrest, our video producer. Connor Collins back in the Finley Studios, our radio producer. Got Caden and Sebastian helping us out tonight. We've got multiple camera angles tonight for you in this big tilt between crosstown rivals. Inside to Aloha, pump fake, tries to score too strong. Rebound to Forsey, who just checked in the game. Yeah, and that's where we talked about in the pregame. Those are the buckets that the Warriors are going to need to fall, right, just to relieve a little bit of pressure on Owen. And there he is, Mr. Reverse himself, Logan Whitehour with another strong finish on that baseline drive. Two from the left hand and one now from the right. Beautiful pass, Aloha lay and got it. Oh, I thought we were going to have our house of jump dunk there. Probably could have, but I, maybe we went to gather and then just wanted to make sure that he got that bucket in. Robinson will drive the baseline. The Flyers have been able to get to the baseline at ease in this game so far. I'm not sure if that's by design or just. Well, I mean, and I wasn't in any of the meetings for the Warriors, but if you think of what Brecken Robinson is typically known for is shooting the ball. So, uh, you know, maybe he's telling them to close out hard and, and force that drive instead of closing out short and giving up three pointers. Flyers dig in defensively after the turnover at the other end. A low, a hard drive on Lemke. High off the window, too strong. Rebound wide hour. Flyers up 15-13. 142 left in the first quarter. Robinson on off right-hand dribble. Wrap around to the middle. The Roberts finger roll. No. Oh, great cut, great pass. Outlet to Aloha. I don't know if he saw it, but he reacts and grabs it. Back to Mackey. Over to Kelch. Warriors in the half-court set here with 125 on the first quarter clock. Kelch, over to Ince, man-to-man -man defense applied here by the Flyers, wearing the white with the blue trim, the black with the green and gold trim, and Mackey wants the three, missed it, rebound Ince, Warriors doing a great job on the offensive glass, second chance opportunity here, kick out Kelch, great look at a three, misfires, another offensive Good job rebound. by the Warriors on the boards. And Coach Ball wants him to spread it out. Yeah, and Coach Roberts just kind of threw up his hands like, guys, come on. Well, when you take a lot of deep threes, you're going to get those big bounces yeah, off the rim. Yeah, and what you hate is, I mean, the Warriors were down to seven or eight on the shot clock there, and now you give up an offensive rebound, you got to do it all over again. Ants to Mackey. Mackey working on Limke, spins away from a double team. Backdoor cut, and the thievery there from Tyson Forsey. Good steal. Yeah, great job on the back cut, snapping his head and getting his hand on that ball. Shot clock is off. 22 on the first quarter clock. Flyers lead is 2, 15-13. Roberts to the middle. Little floater. Left is short. Got his own miss. Kick out to the corner. Robinson sizing up a three. It's in the air. He misfires. And still 10 seconds. Mackey's going to pass it ahead and out of bounds. And that means Dixie's going to get it back <laughs> on the baseline with 7.4. I think Mackey thought there was less time than that. Yeah, first when he, when he cocked it back, I thought he was passing it to someone. I think he was shooting that. I think he thought the clock was just about out. Oh, they, no, they do give it to him at the other end. My mistake. So here we go. But plenty of time here for Roberts with three. And a block call. Now, that won't be two free throws. They had a foul, plenty of fouls to give. We've only got two fouls apiece so far in this game. Oh, that's, that's Kelch's first personal yeah, foul. Yeah, he just tried to anticipate that. J-Rob with 2.4 to trigger it in. Gets it to Limke. Back to Roberts. He'll take a three. Pretty good look. Got it. Hey. Roberts from downtown. Cash Valley Bank to give the Flyers on the Wilkinson scoreboard an 18-13 lead after eight minutes of play. How about that shot from J-Rob? Yeah, 2.4. That's a play they run all the time. A little side OB play. Really good pass by Kyle Limke. Great shot by Jordan Roberts. Fun first quarter. Stick around. Quarter number two coming up when we come back on the Fan Sports Network. Nets on Fire is the place to hoop in Southern Utah. Elevate your game with group or individual training with elite coaching. Hustle to NetsOnFire.org to learn more and see why so many rising stars hoop at Nets. Nets on Fire, building champions on and off the court. We are Utah's financial outfitter, and we're here when it's time for your business to climb higher. 
Cash Valley Bank. Mountains away. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Nets on Fire is the premier indoor basketball training facility in southern Utah with four full-size gyms and group and individual training packages available for every age and skill level. Nets on Fire can elevate your game. Hoop it, Nets! Say stands for is written on our faces, welcoming, neighborly, knowledgeable. When you're in need of a helpful face, visit one of our three southern Utah locations. Back live here at the hangar. 18-13, Flyers have the lead. Devin Dixon, Casey Winters. As always, we'll be looking to hand out some awards tonight, like our Hearst Ace Hardware Player of the Game Award. We'll name one for each team at the conclusion in our Johnson Pediatric Dentistry post-game show. Also pick the playmaker play of the game from our boys at Appliance Wholesalers Plus. Shot won't go. And nearly a steal, but Snow Canyon will have it back. What do you see from the defensive effort from both these teams in the first quarter, Casey? Matt, the thing that stands out, the Warriors have done a great job on the on the on the boards. They've done a great job cleaning up the glass. I think, you know, from the fires, yeah, Owen has seven, but we haven't really let anybody else hurt us. Just clean up our, our boxing out and rebounding a little bit. And then, you know, Snow Canyon. Let's just do a better job of cutting off that baseline, cutting off the paint, not letting guys get all the way to the rim for a finish. And we got a little tie up down low. <coughs> and it'll stay with Snow Canyon basketball in the alternate possession. Carter Campbell's going to check back in. is going to come out. And if I'm Snow Canyon, let's clean up our, our passes a little bit. You know, we've tried to force a few in there, maybe throwing a few, a uh, couple of them a little bit too late that have led to some turnovers. Definitely want to limit our turnovers uh, and not have. Dixie turn it back on us and, and, and race down the court for an easy bucket. Leading scores when you check the Scooters coffee stats, Jordan Roberts and Logan Whitehour, six each for the Flyers. Owen Mackey leads all scorer early on. He's got seven. Scooters coffee and Hurricane, proud sponsor, Region I'm Hoops. Mackey three, no, trying to beat the clock with another, another offensive board. rebound. Yeah, the Warriors have done a great job on the offensive glass, giving themselves. Now we just need to convert a few more, make them pay. Smith, Campbell, screening. They switch. Lemke now guarding. They'll switch back. And they'll whip it down to Campbell. On the baseline, back down one dribble, and then kick it out to nobody. And that'll be a turnover by the Warriors. And you hate, you hate turnovers. I mean, turnovers are the worst. But at least that one doesn't, doesn't lead to an automatic layup, right? At least we have a chance to set up our defense. I know Coach Ball's not happy with it, but it's better than a live ball turnover that leads to a dunk or a bucket. Keeping track of our Red Rock real estate rebounds, how about the, the five offensive rebounds already in this game for Snow Canyon? Yeah, and it's not just Owen Aloha and Owen Mackey. I mean, it's Trey Kelsch. It's Reggie Mackey. Yeah. So by committee, they're doing a great job on the offensive glass. I might even missed one. It might be six. Roberts, deep shot won't go. Rebound Mackey. Omak crossed half court. Kicks to Ince, trying to post up. No, instead they go to the corner. Smith to Ince, over to Campbell. 24 on the shot clock. Warriors will settle into their half-court offense. They trail 18 to 13. Warriors could use a bucket here. Smith will take a deep three and depth. nothing but net. Yeah, that's one thing Gray Smith can do. He can shoot the rock. And you saw right there, good driving kick. Had his feet set, let it fly. Good shot by Dre Smith. Lemke answers with the right hook. And the Flyers back up by four, 20 to 16. And I think at some point soon, Coach Ball is going to have to decide, are we going to leave Carter Campbell to the Wolves and just let him and Kyle go at a one-on-one? -on -one? Or is he going to send a double team, a dig, something that might be able to help? Woo. I don't know how Mackey kept yeah, that I don't either. clean with the dribble, but then he throws it high, and it's stolen away by Brecken Robinson. Here come the Flyers. Whitehour thought about a three. Now nobody coming at him. He's going to take it and hit it. Cash Valley Bank triple. Good ball fake. Good ball fake. Whitehour's got a game-high nine. First triple of the game for Logan, who was here, I think, you know, through middle school, playing with these guys and moved away and now moving back to Dixie for his senior season. And a 
high whistle and a foul as Smith drives in and there's some contact. Yeah, good job by Drown now after hitting that last three, they're gonna close out hard, get those shoulders low and get to the rack, get to the free throw line. And this is, I mean, we talk about this a lot, especially when we have a Dixie broadcast, Deb, right? Teams are find themselves in this situation a lot the Snow Canyon's in right now. You know, it's a six point lead, five minutes left. What's it gonna be like five minutes from now? Is it gonna be a 12, 15 point game or is it gonna be a four point game? Um, you do not wanna get into a double digit deficit before halftime uh, against the Dixie Fires. So for Snow Canyon, it's gonna be huge here. Convert these free throws, go down, get a stop, keep rebounding the ball the way you are and try to keep this thing as close as you can before halftime. Bold free throws hit by Smith. Tonight's game brought to you by Finley Subaru. See the all-star lineup on the saving side of the freeway. Great partner of local sports here on the network. Get you an update on the Pineview Cedar game in just a second. Roberts to the middle and a whistle and a foul. The Nets on fire score update. Pineview leads Cedar 19 to 10 into the first quarter. Thoughts on that, Casey? As expected, I think, you know, and it'll be interesting to see how that game progresses, especially being up in Cedar. Uh, but Pineview's playing some good basketball right now. To the middle, floater, Robinson too strong. Rebound, Whitehour, put back, that's good. Logan, Whitehour's already got 11. Yep, doing a little bit of everything. Game high 11 for Logan Whitehour. And it's the largest lead of the game at seven now. And Smith wants to change it with a three, but that's too strong. And Dixie does get a one and done with a nice defensive rebound. Roberts to the middle, whips to the corner. Robinson trying to feed it to Myers and it's tipped out of bounds. And one thing I have noticed, you know, possession or two ago, you saw Kyle Lemke all alone at the three-point line. Carter Campbell was sagging so far off Kyle. I'd like to see Kyle actually pull that trigger. He can shoot it. Inside, guess who, Casey? Logan Whitehour having himself a half. 13 on the half. One of the flyers that averaged in double digits. Four of their five starters do so, including Whitehour. And there's a nice little teardrop. And starting to fill it up a little bit is Dre Smith. He's got seven all here in the second quarter. And that's a great sign for the Warriors. We talked about who that next guy's gonna be. Right now, it's Dre Smith. Crossover by J-Rob, the Lemke, back out to Whitehour, guarded by Mackey. Roberts now on the angle right, goes to Lemke, and Campbell gets caught extending an arm, and it's called for the personal foul, his second. Yeah, that's a lucky one. I think Kyle might have been going to set a ball screen right there. Jordy passed it to him, and luckily he caught it. 3.36, Nets on fire clock, second quarter action, 27-20. Dixie with the lead over Snow Cannon and the possession here. Still 30 on the shot clock, stop, pop, 15-footer, Jordy Roberts. I like Jordy's mentality tonight. You know, he's not just looking to pass. You know, he had a few really good drives in the first quarter that didn't quite drop, but he's being aggressive, looking to score the ball. Crimson leading Hurricane right now, 28-20. Hurricane just hit a three, and has already got four triples in the game, and it's now 28-25, so that game out of the Tigers' den tonight. Damon Entz, yep, Damon Entz on a nice little off-ball cut there. Quick catch and score for Damon. Entz has got six, Dre Smith with seven, Mackey with seven, and Aloha with two. Four Warriors have scored. Yeah, we haven't seen a bucket from Owen Mackey in, in quite some time. Pump fake and a good one, and then scores it with a kiss off the window. There's the big guy, Kyle Lemke. Him and Jordan Roberts committing to go play for Andrew May at Snow College. Yeah, go Badgers, baby. Coach May, he's done a great job. I know at one point, I haven't checked recently, they were top five in the nation for junior college team. He's done a great job with a lot of Utah kids. You know, you got Isaac Finlinson, Noah Lemke, Gage Savage, some Region 9 studs up there doing it, getting it done for the Badgers. Is Lemke in his final year of eligibility? Will their brothers get to play? <laughs> I hope so, but I'm not sure. I'm not either. It's hard to keep track with all the COVID and yeah, Noah extra year. And didn't yeah. Noah take a year? He started at Utah Tech, so he took a year off. Yeah, yeah, but um, I see posts from him every once in a while, and it looks like they're all playing. I've seen Isaac Finlinson's had some big games where he scored, you know, 15, 18, 20 points. 
31-22, our score on the Wilkinson's Hassel Lighting scoreboard. Extra pass, Robinson all alone, lets it fly. Offensive rebound, Forsey to Lemke. Back out to Roberts. A little hesitation. And hit the, caught the other yeah, side of the, the rim. Bottom of the backboard there. And that's a turnover, and here come the Warriors. Kelch feeds it through back outside. And Mackey hasn't scored in a while. He felt like he needed a bucket, and there's Omac. Yep, and great extra pass by Joe Mack Smith right there to get Owen going again. Yeah, Joe Mack Smith, first action of the game here. Minute 30 to go, first quarter, uh, first half. 31-25, Flyers lead is six. Got some D-up chance going from the So Canyon student section. Inside of Lemke, working on Aloha. And might have partially got a block, yeah. but he scores it anyway. There's two, the strength. Two, and two, I mean, Owen's a strong kid, but you can't just play right behind him. You've got to three-quarter him. You've got to force him to his left. You've got to do something besides let him just bully you down there. And there's a three by Ince. He's starting to heat up. He's got nine. Cash belly bank triple. How about the sharp shooting from Damon yeah, Ince? Yeah, great half by Damon Ince. Done it on some basket. Oh, ooh. Brecken Robinson just saved a dunk right there. Yeah, a really good, quick reaction. And <laughs> you actually see a few people standing up in the crowd on the reverse of the 360. Yeah, and if he doesn't foul him quick, if he's out in front, you know, that could have been intentional, but no call, just a yeah, normal foul. No, I think that was he a smart, smart move. Yeah, you don't want Mackey bringing the student section, which is very boisterous tonight, bringing the roof down here at the hangar. Got to give credit to the Snow Canyon student body section. They yeah, come they out travel well. Full force, yeah. 33-28, 40 seconds to go first half. Fast moving first half. Warriors with the basketball, 22 on the shot clock. And straight away on a dribble, goes to the handoff there to Mackey, to Smith, back to Reggie Mackey, and now back to Owen. Omak, step back three, straight away. So oh. pretty, nothing but the bottom. <laughs> Solid defense right there by Logan Whitehour. Just a better move by Owen Mackey to create some separation and splash the three. 33-31. Flyers can have the last shot of the half. We're down to seven. Whip it inside Limke. And they're gonna call Aloha on a bump foul down low. Which you don't, you don't mind. It's not a layup. You're not in the bonus yet. Not a bad foul right there by Owen Aloha. And I would probably actually give one more right here. If I'm the Warriors, you got a couple fouls to give before you're in the bonus. Cade Landion is checking in for Snow Canyon. I don't think I've seen him play yet this year in a game. It's like, hey, go in and guard Kyle Lemke. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Inside, Lemke, spin move, got it. And that'll do it for the first half as Kyle Lemke <laughs> showing you the drop step spin move here, Casey. Yeah, that's that's a tough ass for anybody. And, you know, the Snow Canyon coaches wanted them to foul, and he just couldn't quite do it. But great response right there by the Warriors that last half of the quarter to keep it within four. Halftime here at the hangar. 35-31 on the Wilkinson scoreboard. We'll take a two-minute timeout. Come back with the Rally Stop Halftime Show on the Fan Sports Network. Own property and want to rent it? Then you need the right team with 11 years of local experience, a staff of over 25 employees, and a 4.9 Google rating. Aim to maximize your rental income and find quality tenants while keeping turnover low to increase your revenue and truly maintain your property. Learn more at redrockpropertymanagement.com. As a local business owner, it's important to get the word out about your business. More people equals more revenue for you. Get your business in front of over 160,000 people in southern Utah each week with St. George News. Contact St. George News today we love giving back to our community and over the years we have provided vehicles for families in need supported local charities and helped train our first responders dealer collision your place for collision repair everyone loves local sports and of course loves ice cream and the best ice cream on the planet is handles homemade ice cream open late every day of the week with dozens of delicious flavors so after your favorite team wins head over to handles to celebrate with locations in st george layton and woods cross need an appliance or two awp's got you check out the remodeled expansive showroom highlighting the cafe series with colors like matte black matte white and modern glass make your kitchen stand out come see the local boys at awp across the freeway from the Bloomington Walmart. Red Rock Real Estate has over 200 professional realtors in the St. George area that specialize in the local market. Whether you're buying your dream home, looking for an investment property, or want to sell your home for the highest amount, the Red Rock Real Estate team is here to assist you. Get started now by visiting redrockrealestate.com. 
Did you know that St. George News has a new app? Download the St. George News app today and stay up to date on everything happening in Southern Utah. Get instant notifications on news, weather, sports, and more. Download the app today and get your local news now. Scooter's Coffee and Hurricane is the best way to start your day or get you through your day. From breakfast sandwiches to cinnamon rolls to amazing smoothies and, of course, coffee, anytime is a good time to sip and smile Scooter's Coffee. Open seven days a week. Relatives coming to visit, not enough room, or maybe you're looking to host a family reunion and need a house with a pool. Well, Red Rock Vacation Rentals has got you covered. From two-bedroom condos to 10-bedroom luxury homes, they truly have something for everyone. Plan your perfect getaway or staycation. Visit St. George, Utah, vacationrentals.com. The Fan Sports Network is your home for local sports. Catch the drive with Devin Dixon from 7 to Welcome to the Rally Stop Halftime Show. Devin Dixon, Casey Winters, got the Fan Sports Network crew. Jed Edge. This is the show routine, I'm guessing, here. Yeah, I got big region competition coming up next week. Next Monday? I think, yeah. Next Monday, It'll be believe. a battle, as always. I will be there. Uh, yeah, Jen has one, four straight state championships. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. P retired. They got a new coach and make another run at repeating. Snow Canyon, Desert Hills look strong again this year. Ridgeline, Skyview, I'm here in Hillcrest, one of the new teams. Yeah. The state drill will be uh, coming up that first week of February. And it's just as competitive as football, basketball, oh, baseball, fill in the blank. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at the half, 35-31, Casey, what an entertaining, fast-flowing first half that was. Yeah, it seems like we say that about every game. It seems like, you know, we're not shooting as many free throws in that first half just blows by. But I thought both teams had moments in that first half where they did a really good job of – you know, getting a couple stops and, and trying to extend the lead. Snow Canyon did a good job of not letting a 17 or a seven point lead balloon into a, a double digit lead, hit some big shots. Owen Mackey got going again right there. But I think a lot of the keys to the game that we mentioned are, are in play. I mean, you look at the, the box score for Dixie right now, they got two guys in double figures. Jordy's right there close. A couple other guys have scored. If you look at Snow Canyon, right, we've mentioned the supporters, right, and and the big need for that. And Dre Smith did a good job. Damon Ince did a good job. And so I think both coaches have to be pretty happy at halftime in the locker room. Obviously, there's going to be some adjustments, and it's going to be interesting to see what those are. But great first half by both teams. Here is your Scooters copy. First, the individual scoring for the Flyers, who lead by four. Logan Whitehour, 13 points. Uh, tied for a game high. Kyle Lemke, 12. You mentioned those are the guys in double figures. Jordan Roberts right there behind him with eight. And then two for Brecken Robinson. For the Warriors, 13 for Mackey. And man, he was kind of stuck on seven, but then got a couple deep buckets yeah, just, there. Boom, yeah. boom, to really cut into that flyer lead with a couple of Cash Valley Bank threes. Yeah, I think, you know, as you look at Owen and those two threes he made, I think that's what makes him such a, a, a valuable prospect moving forward is his ability to hit shots like that. So I'm sure Coach Judkins was excited to see that. But as impressive as, as Owen's 13 was, I thought, you know, Dre Smith, seven, six or seven right there in that halfway through the second quarter stretch was huge. And then Damon Entz just getting timely buckets has been crucial to Snow Canyon being able to be within four points points right now. Yeah, Damon Ince, nine, right behind Owen Mackey, and the 13. You mentioned Dre Smith, seven, and then Owen Aloha with two. Yeah. So both teams have four guys score, but really the trio for each team doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Yeah, and, and that's what it's going to have to be. You know, I, I think if I'm, if I'm coach ball, I'm trying to f make some sort of adjustment and how we're going to guard Kyle. Um, but we can't let Logan Whitehour keep doing what he's doing. He's just kind of carving us up 
get into the rim, uh, you know, hit the one three, but has done a really good job. So how are we going to protect the paint, right, and maybe force them to hit some threes, which we know they can do, but they haven't done a, a ton of in this game. And then if I'm Coach Roberts, I think the biggest thing I'm preaching right now is rebound the basketball. Yeah, well, well, let's do this. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll revisit our keys to the game. And we'll talk a little bit more about the second half adjustments. Also, after the 60-second timeout, we'll get you the other scores from around the region. Let's Brought to you it. by Nets on Fire. This is the Rally Stop Halftime Show back in 60 seconds. Oh, hello, Italian nightclub from Jimmy John's. Ciao, freshly baked bread piled with Italian-style meats. Hey, hand-sliced veggies. Am I obsessed with this sandwich? Yeah. So what if I am? Jimmy John's. Order online or on the app. Asphalt. It's not something we think about much, except when it's in bad shape. At Holbrook Asphalt, we help cities, HOAs, and businesses avoid replacing painfully expensive roads and parking lots. To avoid the cost of replacing asphalt, you must effectively preserve it while it's still in good condition. University research has shown Holbrook Asphalt's HA5 slows asphalt aging by 67%. We make your pavement assets last longer, cost less to own, all while achieving higher property values. Visit HolbrookAsphalt.com to discover more. At Intermountain Sports Performance, we've been training athletes from Logan to St. George for over 20 years, and we guarantee your athlete will improve speed, agility, explosive power, and reduce the risk of injury while working with the most qualified team in all of Utah. Call 435-251-2299 to find the location. Or visit FinleySubaru.com where you can buy a car right from your home. Live here at the half, and it's presented by Rally Stop. We got a little shoot for cash going on here. Dude, Jimmy John's for a year, Dev. Get me down there. Yeah, what is yeah. that? 52 or something of those yeah. free, free sandwiches? Yeah, we should have got you down I there. I could have hit a half quarter for that. Yeah. Oh, online, just a little short. Uh, first, your Nets on Fire score updates. Nets on Fire. Um, got, of course, their winter league going on. Uh, Ignite, their AU program tryouts are coming. Like, well, what, a month away, right? Yeah, uh, right before spring break. Yeah, it's going to be fun, so make sure you go to netsonfire.org and check out all the details. Um, Pineview is up 38-21 over Cedar, up in Cedar City. And Crimson Cliffs in the Tigers' den at the half leads 36-30. Yeah, great night in Region 9. Obviously, every game matters, and it's going to be interesting to see how those two other games play out in the second half. Let's go back to our team, the auto sales keys to the game real quickly. Casey, uh, get the checklist out. How did the teams do in that first half, first for the Snow Canyon Warriors? So you look at, you know, defense limits one shot. Yeah, I think they've done a pretty good job on the boards. They're on track for 65, so we may get there. It's just going to be how many does Dixie sto score. Uh, get back on D. Haven't been a ton of fast break opportunities, you know, for the for the Flyers. And then limit turnovers, I think, is the biggest one that they can, that they can adjust. And then for Dixie, yeah, you want to get Jordan running. He's done a good job. Points in the paint. You know, Logan's done, or uh, excuse me, Kyle's done a great job on that and I think they're having fun right it feels like they're having fun and then rebounding which I guarantee is something that, that coach Roberts talked about we got one of the players got drawn out of the car oh, and just, almost got it just missed the almost Jimmy. got it hey, hey, if, if who is that Simmons yeah Colin if, Simmons if Colin Simmons would have hit that he might have made our Jimmy John's highlight of the week here on the fan sports yeah, network he was close tried to bank it in there yeah also brought to you by Jimmy John's. So, fun little halftime. Uh, Jimmy John's is feeding our local schools. Pineview won in December the fan vote. So, Pineview gets a catered lunch. Jimmy John's will be taking that over to Pine Pineview High School. We already got a bunch of highlights for the month of January. Voting will be right there at the 1st of February. And we'll continue that through baseball season. Looking forward to the partnership with Jimmy John's Freaky Fast. We stopped by a local Jimmy John's today. Yeah, I saw that highlight of Sean Feltz throwing down a dunk last week in Snow Canyon. That one's going to be tough to beat. Yep. That was a monster dunk by Sean Feltz. Yep, he's had a few of those this year, hasn't yes, he? he has. Uh, again, that Crimson only up six at the Tigers' den tonight. Pineview taking care of business so far on the road, up 38-21. Here is our closest game right now, 35-31. They'll add three minutes on the clock as we close 
comes in on the second half. We'll take one final break, come back with final halftime stop, uh, thoughts in the Rally Stop halftime show, and then the second half action. We'll be back in 60 seconds here on your home for high school hoops, the Fan Sports Network, and streaming tonight on FlyFam TV, KSLSports.com, and of course, our website and YouTube page as well. So lots of ways. If you're listening on radio, you're about home for the night. You can tune in for the second half. Just go to the FanSportsNetwork.com. We'll take the break. Be right back after the 60-second message from our great local partners. Hey, it's Sheldon Demke. Check out the latest episode of What's on the Menu, a behind-the-scenes tour of local restaurants. We'll see some of their favorite dishes and get an inside look on how these dishes are prepared. Check out this week's episode at stgeorgenews.com and click the shows on the menu tab. Adams Wealth Advisory is a financial planning firm that is combined with an investment firm to provide the best possible outcomes for our clients. I always believe if you're intentional with your financial plan, things are going to work out really well for you. Visit AdamsWealthAdvisors.com or call 752-1702 to schedule a time with an advisor today. Red Ledge is Dermatology and Med Spa, specializing in general and cosmetic dermatology, treating acne, rashes, warts, and more. They even do cancer screenings and offer a free chemical bill with your first appointment. So if you need dermatology, think Red Ledge's Dermatology, located just off Snow Canyon Parkway, St. George. Welcome back here at the Hangar Dixie High School. They lead by four. How about the first half for Logan Whiteauer? Man, he's getting some instructions with uh, a couple teammates over there. Kyle Lemke talking with the coaching staff of the Dixie Flyers. And then big first half behind Whiteauer by, you know, Lemke and Jordy Roberts. And then it was a trio of guys doing work for the Warriors. Kelch and Ince really helping out the scoring load of Owen Mackey. Yeah, and, and, you know, we, we, we've talked about it. That's what needs to happen, especially this second half. You know, let, let Owen play a little bit loose. He'll trust his teammates, make some plays, and then that's going to take a little bit of the attention off Owen, not being able to double and help as much if guys are knocking down shots. See if there's any big charge taken or big blocking calls yeah. in the second half. That's brought to you by Dealer Collision, one of our proud sponsors of Region 9 basketball for minor collisions to major repairs. Go see Dealer Collision. They'll fix your car fast and right. Flyer basketball, here we go as the second half is underway. Devin Dixon, Casey Winters here in our Boulevard Home Game of the Week. Keep track of those other games for you as all the games are about to start the third quarter in Region 9 tonight. Right hand hook, Lemke got it. Yeah, right where he left off, getting to his sweet spot. He loves going over that left shoulder to that right hand. Lemke, 12 in the first half, now 14. And not cooling down a bit was Dre Smith with a triple. Yeah, just catch and shoot, sizing up the D, letting it fly. Wide hour, off his foot, and it will be Snow Canyon basketball. Good crew tonight, Monty. Bruce, Bruce and, and, Teddy. and Teddy. Yeah, yep. veteran crew. I thought they've done a nice job. Absolutely. Usually do. Usually yep. do. All the Region 9 officials do a great job. 37-34. Flyers by three. Warriors with the possession. Early third. 50 seconds into the second half. Play-by-play -play brought to you by Handles Homemade Ice Cream. Best ice cream on the planet. Open late on the Bluff Street St. George location. Turnover Dixie. No numbers. White is going to pick his way down to the corner. And the Flyers yeah. will reset out top. It's like Jordy Roberts maybe got a little stinger on his hand. A little, little slow coming back that time. Pump fake and oh, oh just Lemke trickled off. Finish. Good look there for the big yeah, fella. Yeah, great pump fake. Got Carter up in the air and just couldn't quite finish it. Again, standing room only here at Dixie High School. Yeah, great crowd. I, I love this is the best thing about Region 9 is just about every game is, is, is like this. Leap and leaner, no good from Smith. And rebound to Dixie. Rebounding, we'll keep track of that. Red Rock Real Estate rebounds tonight have been big. I think the offensive rebounds the Warriors had, especially that first quarter, kind of kept them close. Yeah, just gave them some extra possessions. Five hour terminated at the elbow, gives to Myers. Damon whips it, and it's tipped and stolen. Here comes in, uh, no, that's Smith. Over to Kelch. Kelch to the middle, all the way to the front of the rim, lays it up and in. Good job by Kelch. Love to see him 
get going a little bit. Maybe get some steals and some tips, hit a timely three. He's capable of being that next guy for the Warriors. Lemke inside, right hand hook, got it. A little Hakeem, right, fake to the left. Come back to the right, nice little kiss off the glass. It, it's, it's hard to think that Lemke is maybe one of the most improved players, but I, I just see it, Casey. He has really worked on a skill set. Yeah. Coach Roberts said he's been a much better leader as a senior this year. Like, there's not an area Lemke hasn't shown improvement, and he's already so good. Yeah, and you can tell he wants it. You know, I mean, we, I think sometimes we forget these guys have lost back-to-back -back state championships. They want this last, this last chance state tournament, and they've played like it all season long. Kelch off of Mackey three, the toilet bowl out, lost control driving in, and they say off of Kelch. 39-36, Flyers by three on the Wilkinson's House of Lighting scoreboard. Brecken Robinson with the pass over to Roberts. Roberts looking inside, trying to insert it to Lemke. He does. Lemke quickly outside. Myers will take a three and missed everything there. And Snow Candy will have it back. Yeah, and you know That's the right play by, by Kyle, though. The help came from Damon. He kicked it to Damon Myers, and that, that's the shot you want. And Lemke quickly went over to Myers and said something like, hey, yeah, that's a good that shot, shoot keep it. shooting it. Yeah, yeah, he has to. And that's the leadership that yep. uh, you, you see from yep. the senior Kyle Lemke. And that's where, you know, we were just talking about Kyle and the improvements he's made. He makes the right decision. He's not going to force up very many shots through a double, triple team. He's going to kick it out and find the wide open shooter. Is Kyle a better senior so far in his career than his brother Noah? Who, I, yeah. I mean, I'm sure Noah would say no. I'm sure Kyle would say yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think, I, I don't know, it's hard. I mean, I think Noah, you know, maybe played a little bit higher, you know, blocking shots and throwing dunks down. But Kyle's so fundamental. Oh, and Mackey with a deep two, they say, not a three. So the lead is down to one. Flyers with the possession up 39-38. Roberts. Goes behind the back, and they're going to call a foul on Kelch. Yeah, it looks like he took a shot to the chin there on that one. But that's where Kelch, you know, he's a great on-ball defender. You know, we talked about a Scoop Johnson. We talked about these different guys. Trey Kelch is right there as far as a guy I would not want guarding me. Baseline to baseline. Roberts over to Lemke. Lemke collects that right hook again. Kyle yeah. Lemke. And it almost looks effortless, Dev. Like, he's just so calm. He's like, all right, let me get to my spot, and I'll make it happen. All six flyer points coming from Kyle Lemke. He's now got 18. Game high. Saved, but right to Robinson. Here come the Flyers. Up by three. Lob it high. Oh. And they miss the alley-oop dunk. Maybe just a little too far off the rim. Here comes Kelch. Four on one. He'll lob it high. Mackie alley-oop lay in. Got it. Good job by the Warriors turning that back around into points. I like that play by Tyson Forcey, though. It's a good look. 9-6 run to start the second half by Snow Canyon, but Lipke's got all eight for the Flyers as he scores again. Yeah, he's unguardable. You got to double. You got to send someone. You got to front. You got to mix it up. And Aloha's going to be checking back in next stop. It's 3-14 left in the third on the Nets on fire clock. Dixie by three. Dre Smith flips it to Ince. Ince to the middle, all the way in. Wrap around to Campbell, and he mm. couldn't find the handle. And here comes Forsey. Ahead to Roberts in the corner. Good look at a three. It's in the air, but he left it short. And the ball is last touched out of bounds by Snow Canyon. Aloha and Reggie Mackey both will check in. Campbell and Ince will check out for Coach Ryan Ball. Warriors come in 12 in the latest 4A RPI. Dixie at number two. A win against Dixie by any region team is going to, what, jump in three, four spots easily in the RPI rankings? Yeah, and I think even as long as you're playing close, you'll jump up. That was a great drive right there by Jordan Roberts. Just a nice little slash down the lane for a nice finger roll. He's in the double digits. He's got 10 on the game. Aloha bumped, and they're going to get a foul on the floor by Lemke, I believe. Yeah, a little handsy on the drive there. Never really left his feet, just a little bump. Yeah, kind of. Not anything egregious, but enough to draw the whistle. Kelch to trigger it in. Whips it out to Smith. Smith will take the three, miss the three, rebound Dixie. Flyers by five, 45-40. 
And we might get the big score dessert tonight. Let's go. Everybody can head to Yogurt Land in St. George for five ounces free yogurt as Roberts is starting to heat up. Yep. Back-to-back to back to back to back possessions by Jordan just making the right decision, coming off those screens wide open. He's now got 12 in the contest. Kelch spin move and a bump foul on Roberts. Kelch has had an all-around good floor game tonight. Yeah, he plays so hard. I mean, we talk about like a Damon Myers. We talk about, you know, other guys that just, they don't stop. And, and Trey Kelch is definitely one of those guys for Coach Ball. Inbound Kelch. Aloha. And it's stripped away. Here come the Flyers. And Roberts is going to take a stop and pop three, left it short. Mackey saving it, and Aloha gobbles it up. Great hustle right there by Owen Mackey. That could have pushed the Flyer lead to 10 at that three drop for Roberts in transition. Now Mackey had to lose the handle, and no call. He wants to run. Roberts ahead, forcing right hand laying. Got it. Good. Oh, and turnovers are just hurting the Warriors right now. Just, you know, losing balls on drives and things like that, turning into points. They're getting to the middle, but if the mid-range jump shots are there, but this time Mackey stops there. Uh, yeah, maybe got fouled, slapped on the elbow as he went by, but yeah, got to take care of the ball if you're the Warriors right now. This is this is crunch time. Timeout on the court. Brought to you by Luke Udy at American Family Insurance. See how much Luke can save you on your home, auto, or life insurance. Luke Udy, American Family Insurance. Well, great start to the third quarter for Snow Cannon, but a nice little rally, and the Flyers have now tied their largest lead of the game. It's back up to nine. Yeah, a couple missed shots for the Warriors, a couple turnovers, and Dixie does what they do. They turn it right back around. Jordy Roberts with back-to-back -back buckets, and then Tyson Forsey with the nice finish in transition on that last one. Look ahead to Friday, brought to you by Intermountain Sports Performance. And how about two games on the Fan Sports Network? The radio game, Dixie Pineview here from the pit, and then uh, Crimson Desert Hills from over at the Fieldhouse. Yeah, you're going to be in another, another great night. Both will be streaming on our website. We'll start with Dixie Pineview, but if the Crimson Desert Hills game is closed in the I think second you have half, we'll switch. switch. Yeah, it's uh, Dixie at Desert Hills. Oh, Dixie at Desert Hills. I'm Crimson sorry. Pineview, I believe. My mistake. You're right. Two great matchups, though. Aloha inside. And Aloha missed. A Lemke making him go over the top of the outstretched arms. Roberts crossover, spin move. And he finishes oh. right at the front of the rim. <laughs> Jordy Roberts in this third quarter has been spectacular on the offensive end. He's got six in the quarter, 14 on the night. That move right there was Steve Nash-esque. Yeah. Quick spin move. And Forsey called for a reach on Mackey. Forsey doing a good job defensively, though, making Mackey work. It's been... Wide hour mostly, but we've seen Limke have a chance on Mackey. We're seeing now Forsey yeah. get a chance guarding Owen Mackey. Yeah, and Tyson Forsey does a great job off the bench as well. And, and Tyson Forsey will be the star of this Dixie Absolutely. team. He is just a junior. He'll be the guy, the main weapon yep. next year. And he's had some moments this season where, I mean, he, at times, he's the best player on the court. I mean, just what he can bring defensively on the boards. And he gets that three-pointer going. He can drive to the basket. He's a really, really solid player. And he's going to have some big moments this season for the Flyers. Just a junior. The rest of the starters all seniors. For Coach Tyler Roberts, Jordy to the middle, slashing down the lane. Got another one. Eight in the quarter, 16 in the ball game. Lemke's got 20. Whitehour's got 13, but Logan hasn't scored in the second half yet. Yeah, and Jordy with what eight? Eight in the quarter, I believe he ended the half with eight. Now he's at 16, kind of showing us what he can do. Mackey pacing the Warriors. He's got 17 so far tonight. If we take a look at the Scooters Coffee stats. Amazing drinks, amazingly fast. By amazing people out in Hurricane, stop by today when next time you're cruising through H-Town. Scooters Coffee. One of our new sponsors this year on the Fan Sports Network. Excited to have them. Inside Campbell laying. Oh, he missed a wide open lay-in. I think we got a jump ball. 
Yeah, and Carter's upset at himself. That was a great play by the Warriors on the out-of-bounds play. That's where just big fella go up and hammer that thing home. A great play by Coach Ball right there. He slipped that screen yep. and was wide open at the front of the rim. Alternate possession, though, the Warriors do get it back, and now Brecken Robinson trying to steal the inbounds. Does get called for the foul out top. That was an easy call for the official to make. That was contact. That's three on Brecken. Yeah, well, Brecken's been a little quiet tonight, but... Yeah, he really has just You know two what? Points. I, I mean, when he looks up at the scoreboard, he's like, oh, we're good. But uh, definitely a player that can turn it on at any time. So Cannon will take a quick timeout. We'll keep it right here. Just 2.3 seconds in the quarter, and then we'll take a break. All of a sudden, you look up, and the Flyers have the 53-40 to 40 lead on the Wilkinson scoreboard. Yeah, and that's what they do. I mean, you you look up, you know, after a couple turnovers, a couple missed shots, and a three-point lead turns into a 13-point lead. And then it's so hard against the, the Flyers to get back into a game because Dixie just does what they do so well. So definitely an uphill battle here for the Warriors in the fourth quarter, but definitely up for the challenge. Flyers pulling ahead here. Also, Nets on fire score update. Crimson breaking ahead. They now lead 55-38 late third quarter. Quick, so it's, quick bucket right here would be huge for the Warriors to end the quarter. See what Coach Ball draws up. Probably want to get it to Mackey. They'd go to Reggie Mackey. He'll take a deep three oh. and almost got it. Just right on line, just a little bit short. Flyers by 13, 53-40. Fourth quarter coming up when we come back on the Fan Sports Network and streaming on thefansportsnetwork.com. When one of us gets in a car accident, we can help. At McMullen Injury Law, we make sure that problems get solved the best way possible, and we make sure that all insurance claims get paid fully and fairly so you can get back on your feet and get life back to normal. Check out this week's edition of TGIF on stgeorgenews.com. TGIF is your weekend adventure guide to all the fun and exciting things going on in southern Utah this weekend. Find this week's edition at stgeorgenews.com and click the shows on the menu tab. Have a blast this weekend. I've got 15 seconds to list all the reasons that you should call Jason Baum at Bay Equity Home Loans. First-time home buyer specialist, down payment assistant loans, investment loans other guys haven't even heard of, reverse mortgages, and so many more to name before I run out of time. This cheesesteak is so freshly grilled, you could still hear it sizzle. The vehicles for families local charities and help train first responders and we are excited to okay, sponsor local here. sports this season dealer collision your place for collision repair welcome back tonight's game brought to you by finley subaru go see the all-star lineup outback cross trek impreza uh, they got the solterra ev go take a look on the saving side of the freeway devin dixon casey winners and ball deflected out of bounds and Stay at that end. Flyers with the ball up by 13, and got to start trying to get you know a couple stops in a row and yep. get some good looks if you're Snow Canyon. This first four minutes going to be really interesting. Got to try to cool off Roberts and Limke. They've combined for 36 of the 53 Flyer points. You add in Wide Hours 13, and the big three having themselves quite a fantastic night. Roberts to beat the clock, no. And that is a shot clock violation and a good start defensively to the fourth quarter for the Warriors. Yeah, good job by the Warriors. That's what they need. Now let's turn it into points. Be huge for them to get a big bucket right now. It's Reggie Mackey, Trey Kelch, Owen Mackey, Carter Campbell, and Damon Ince for Coach Ryan Ball. Starting five out there for Coach Roberts. Lemke, Roberts, Robinson, Whitehour, and also Myers. Lemke's guarding Mackey right now. Mackey goes to the mid-range baseline. Jay, oh, so silky. silky. Smooth. Woo, took the words right out of my mouth. That was, that was beautiful. Roberts lobbing high for Lemke. Lemke just forces his way in and a foul on Campbell. You know what? I don't, I mean, Carter Campbell's upset that he got the foul there. Make him earn it from the free throw line, right? We, we've seen him, you know, bully his way to the basket all night. Make him earn it from the free throw line. And Lemke will have to do so. Fabulous Freddy's free throw line, unlimited car wash club. Wash your car as many times as you want all month long for as low as $9.99. Are you kidding me? 
Very few free throws tonight, Dev. I mean, this is what? Maybe the fourth free throw all game? We haven't, we haven't had very many. And nobody's even been really close to getting into no. you know, foul trouble. No, but usually you see Owen Mackey living at the free throw line. You see Kyle Lemke at the free throw line a lot more. We got one of two, so splitting the free throws. Lemke's now got 21. And that leads all scores. Mackey's got 19 to pace SC. Warriors need a bucket, down by 12. And nice little cut. They will, on the ground. They will stay on the ground, you're right. No bucket by Mackey, he'll have to earn it. Good little play right there by the Warriors. Like that little scissor cut, little butt cut for Owen. Yeah, that split action, you make, you make yeah. the defender make a choice, don't you? Yeah, and fourth on Brecken Robinson there. He'll head back to the bench. Boulevard home, game of the week for 50 years serving Southern Utah. Glad you're with us. Fourth quarter action, 6.28 on the clock, 54-42. And now another foul. And this one's going to be an offensive foul, and it's going to go against Carter Campbell again. I believe that's his fourth. Yeah, I think you're right. Just kind of got tangled up as he was trying to roll right there. Campbell is not happy. Yeah, he's playing hard. Picked up a couple of quick fouls right here to start the quarter. Forces him to go to the bench. 12-point lead for the Flyers. Roberts right down the lane and couldn't finish it, but a foul, and Roberts will shoot two. Yeah, great drive off the screen right there. And, and you know, it puts Dre Smith in a tough spot right there. If he overhelps too much, then you leave Damon Myers wide open for a three. If you don't help enough, Jordan's going to get a layup or get to the free throw line like he did right there. Tonight's game brought to you by House of Jump. Still haven't got our dunk of the night. Which, if you told me Kyle Lemke, Owen Mackey, Owen Aloha, Carter Campbell, Logan White, I were all in the same game, I thought we'd be there four or five times already. If we get it, we'll let you know the text number to text in and get one hour free jump time for everybody to text in. Mackey, turnaround jumper, too strong. And rebound Lemke. Dixie in control, up by 12. Six minutes exactly left in the fourth quarter. Fresh shot clock. They'll go inside, lob it high, and whistle on a foul on Aloha. Warrior fans don't like that call. I was watching the ball. Didn't yeah, really it looks like he was look. trying to front him and just maybe backed him up a little bit too hard, kind of pushed him away from being able to catch the ball. Roberts to trigger it in. Into Forsey. Right now it's Brecken Robinson that's getting a breather for the Dixie Flyers, who only have a six-man rotation. Bob it high to Lemke. Kick out, wide open, Forsey. It's in the air, no. Rebound, Warriors. Little opportunity, kind of feel like Warriors need a bucket. And Lemke gets a little trip action right in front of the official. Yeah, a little, little late to call it, but I think it was indeed the right call. Coach Ball coaching the Warriors. Coach Jones, Coach Cundy, his assistants helping out. They've been on staff for yeah, good, a long time. Good long guys years. over there, great staff over there. And, and same can be said about the fire staff. They've all been together for a long time coaching these kids up. Yeah, Coach Carter, Coach Howard, Coach Glover, Coach Forsey. They got a couple of alumni. Tom Whitehead helps out on yeah, the fire yeah, staff. Yeah, Walker Swenson. Walker, another alumni, yep. played here at Dixie. Finger roll laying, J Rob got it. He's got 18, 10 in the second half. Kelch down the lane, 14 point lead. This is the largest of the night. Warriors need a bucket, probably need a triple and a couple of them yeah, to try to get back in the game. Yeah, might have to game. start pressing a little bit, try to force some turnovers. Inside to Aloha, back out to Kelch. 14 on the shot clock, Kelch to the middle and an offensive foul on Aloha. And now the bigs of the Warriors start to get a little bit of foul trouble. Oh, yeah, a couple of tough calls against the, the Warriors there. Just things you don't expect, you know, moving screens, things like that. Three now on Owen Aloha, Campbell has four. We talked about in the pregame, that 10 fouls between those two bigs and they're, they're about using them all up. <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah, they both play super physical, which you don't mind, you just want it to be used in the right way. 
He's talking with Lemke, and it seems like a lot of the bigs in the region get along. He was talking Absolutely. about yeah, you can see him, him and Sean Owen. Phelps yeah, are pretty buddies. You see him and Owen talking. They, they battle, and they compete, and they've all made each other better over the years, which is the great thing. 14-point lead, Flyers with the basketball and the advantage on the scoreboard. Don't forget, we'll be naming our Jersey Mike sub of the game. We'll also have our defensive play of the game brought to you by Mountainland Supply, as well as some other awards in our post-game festivities. Wideauer has a score in the second half, tell right now. Great job. Wideauer right to the front of the rim, right-hand lane, got it. Now a whistle and a foul, and it's gonna be a block on Roberts out top. Yeah, and, and you know, going back to Logan Whitehour for a minute, you know, when we all heard that he was going to be coming down this year, we weren't sure quite what to expect. But man, he does a little bit of everything. He defends at a high level. He rebounds at a high level. He well, scores at the rim as good as anybody in the region. He's long. Yeah, and then you know, if he's wide open, he'll cash a three as well. So, you know, solid, solid season so far for Logan Whitehour. And it kind of replaced. Southwick leaving, yeah. right? It was kind of, you know, the perfect combination. You get one guy, you lose one guy. Southwick go to Richfield? Uh, he or to is Academy. Utah Prep. Utah, Utah Prep. Prep, yep. And, you know, saw that he's picked up an offer from South Florida, I believe. Oh, and nice. And a couple other places this season, yeah. 346 left in the fourth quarter, 58-42. Dixie has the lead. Roberts behind the back, step back, whips to Lemke. Lemke will take a deep three. Not this time. <laughs> and he's smiling, running back. Inside, laying too strong. But that's a shot. You don't mind Kyle Tate. He's going to have to shoot that at the next level. So I agree. I, I think for him, you know, get the rust off now and, and get a little more comfortable shooting those shots. Roberts down the lane, kick out. Forsey's got a good look at a three. That won't fall. Rebound Smith. Here comes Dre. Now slow it up. 311. Warriors haven't scored in some time. Yeah, it's been tough to come by. Inside to Mackey, stripped out of bounds. It'll stay with Snow Canyon, or do they call foul? I think they, they got a foul. foul. Owen will get to the free throw line for two. You can tell Owen's a little frustrated. You can tell he's he's worked his butt off tonight, and not everything's gone his way, but he's still battling and playing hard. He's such a level-headed player. Yeah, he doesn't let his emotions get the best of him very often, but super competitive, kind of that silent assassin. And I, I know he has the respect of every player and coach in the region and the state for the type of player he is, but also for the type of kid that he is. Great kid here representing the Snow Canyon Warriors. Both free throws good for Omac. He's now got 13 in the first half, eight more in the second half, 21. We talked about it last year when the Warriors got a split with the Flyers. They lost when Mackey had 31, but won when he had 21 because the supporting cast was so good. And now wide hour again and one opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> and I think if you're Owen, if you're Coach Ball, and you say, hey, Owen, would you rather have, you know, 25 a night or 35 a night? But if the 25, you got two or three other guys in double figures, he would take that all night long. And, you know, we didn't see the Warriors keep that hot shooting up. You know, Damon Entz had a great first half. Dre Smith had a great first half, hit that first three, and then they've been a little quiet since. 60-45. And here come the Warriors down the stretch. Kelts driving foul. Did Whitehour make the free throw? I believe so. I wasn't yep. looking. I believe so. And at the other end, Kelch is fouled. Yeah, yeah, that and one. And here's the free throw from Kelch. Kelch, just his third point of the night. Looking for one more. 60-46 now our score. And he misfires, split them. Rebound Flyers. And now this is where Dixie can try to maybe use a little bit more of the shot clock. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna wind this thing down, kind of spread it out a little bit. And oh my oh. goodness, Jordy Roberts! How about that magic shot falling down? Yeah, that's just what he's done tonight. Woo! And there's a three by Owen Mackey. A little step back three from Owen Mackey. 
63-48, two minutes to go. And a whistle. But lead is 15. Dixie's so good at putting games away. They've been in some close games. They're really battle tested with the schedule they played preseason. The tournament in California, Leighton Christian, Wasatch Academy, they played some teams. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, the end goal for the Flyers is obviously got to win a state championship. And Coach Robert built the schedule to try to accomplish that. Damon Ince, or Damon Myers, excuse me. Flyers get another bucket. 65 48, timeout on the floor. We'll take a 30 second timeout. Come back for the finish here at the hangar. Flyers pulling away on the Wilkinson scoreboard. Again, 65 48 on the Fan Sports Network. First Ace Hardware is conveniently located in St. George on the corner of Bluff Street and St. George Boulevard with 30,000 square feet of lawn and garden, paint, tools, fabrics, sporting goods, and the most complete nut and bolt section in town. First General Store, the big Ace store on Bluff and on Main in Cedar City. Nets on Fire is the place to hoop in Southern Utah. Elevate your game with group or individual training with elite coaching. Hustle to NetsOnFire.org to learn more and see why so many rising stars hoop at Nets. Nets on Fire, building champions on and off the court. Studio. Uh, Aaron and Caden and the guys were like, timestamp it so we can pull it for Jimmy John's highlights too. So, but only if it's way I can't timestamp. There's no timestamp on the YouTube. It just says live the entire time. Actually, it's the. I could put like the time of the actual game, like. Four we are Utah's financial outfitter, and we're here when it's time for your business to climb higher. Guest Rally Bank, mountains away. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Nets on Fire is the premier indoor basketball training facility in Southern Utah. Hey, yeah. With four. Snow Candy basketball, under two to play. And they'll go right to a quick three-point shot by Kelch. No good, but they get an offensive rebound. Huge Red Rock real estate rebound. And a whistle and a foul. Get the, the spirit chance and yeah. going back and forth. Yeah, that was a good one. Dre Smith fouled there. And that will be spending the rest of the quarter, both teams, in the double bonus, shooting some free throws. Student sections have brought the energy tonight, haven't they? They've done, they've both done a great job. These are probably two of the best we've seen all season. Appreciate Red Rock Real Estate, Red Rock Vacation Rentals, property management, all you need. Go check them out, redrockrealestate.com. And Smith can't convert that fabulous Freddy's free throw. One more. And it's good. So Smith's got 11. And here come the Flyers. Up by 16 tonight. You know, you look at some of the other region games, beat Pineview by 11, beat Crimson by 15, and then beat them by 16. Already had to play the Mustangs twice. So that target on their back, and so far they have passed with flying colors. Looks like Dixie's going to win tonight. Oh. As Lemke wipes it away off the glass that with a big time block. That might be defensive play of the game right there with a, oh. And a foul as Lemke was rim running and tried to block it on yeah. one end and scored on the other end. I think Owen Mackey thought he returned the favor right there with a the block and got called for the foul. This is our Mount Land Supply defensive play of the game. There's Lemke cleaning the glass. Yeah. Might be a ball mark left on the glass after that one. Lemke to the free throw line. First one's up and in. And that's an area, you know, just thinking back to last season and Kyle's sophomore season, he seems a lot more comfortable from the free throw line. He's done a good job shooting free throws this year. Right at his season average, too. 22 tonight. Oh, one more. Here it comes. Out of the hand. Got it. And getting a well-deserved break. Tyler Walter coming in the game. Great game for Kyle Lemke. Yeah, no question. Probably a double-double. I think he had 10-plus rebounds yeah, tonight. A couple blocks, even a couple assists, you know, when they finally started to double him. Mackey will take a three and hit a three. They'll quit no Mack. He's got 27, but it might not be enough. Is there under a minute to go and it's still a 15-point lead? Dixie looks like they're going to win this game. So Cannon will have a little revenge tilt in a few weeks over at the jungle. Myers wants an open three. Why not? Cash Valley Bank triple. Damon Myers. Great find by Logan Whiteout right there on the driving kick. He's got five in the game. 30 seconds to go. Hanging and hitting. Ince with the baseline J. And a timeout on the court. Ince has 11. Drake with 27. Owen Aloha, the only other warrior to score. 
And for Dixie, 23 for Lemke, 20 for J. Robin, 18 for Logan Whitehour to do the heavy lifting. Yeah, and if you look back at uh, a couple of the keys of the game, Dev, you you said it, they had to get to 65, right? Not gonna not gonna make it, uh, but you know. Dixie, you mentioned they're in the 70s, right? Right, For their, season, their, their average. season average. So everything's kind of playing to, to averages. But I thought the Warriors supporting cast did a good job tonight of getting involved. They just had that little dry spell in the third quarter and uh, had some turnovers and some missed shots, and the, the Flyers made them pay with some big buckets on the other end. Good news, though, with the Flyers going over 55 tonight. The Holbrook Asphalt Big Score Dessert is on. So if you're driving around, listen. Make sure to head over to Yogurtland tonight. It's good until they close. Five ounces free frozen yogurt for everybody. I like the plain tart. I like a few strawberries on it and a couple of those cheesecake cubes. They're so delicious. That sounds pretty good right now. Yeah. It's free. If you go a little over five ounces, you might pay a few cents. Inbound, batted around. Over to Reggie Mackey, the three no. It's, or excuse me, Smith gets it over to Owen Mackey. Now to Reggie, another three, this one short. And rebound Flyers. Dixie can run out the clock. Yeah, no foul. That's gonna wrap it. Final score tonight is there's four and three. And a tick down to two and one, and that's a ball game, 70 to 54. Dixie stays undefeated 4-0 in region play. Big home win tonight at the hangar, huh, Coach? Yeah, I, I mean, you always want to defend your home court. You want to keep the, the winning streak alive. You want to keep that region title pursuit alive. Uh, Flyers did exactly what they had to. Courageous effort by the Snow Canyon Warriors just came up a little bit short tonight. Teams exchanging uh, post-game high fives and handshakes. And this one's in the books. 16-point win. Felt closer than that until the fourth quarter, though, didn't it? It did, yeah. I mean, after, once we got to halftime and, you know, it was a four, three, four-point game and stayed, yeah. stayed that way for the first couple minutes of the third quarter. And then Dixie did their thing and, and, and put their foot on the gas and, you know, pushed it up to double digits and stayed there the rest of the game. Yeah, it was 35-31 at half. Snow Canyon had cut it to one there a couple times early in the third, but then Dixie pulled away and doesn't look back with the 16-point advantage. Stick around. Johnson Pediatric Dentistry postgame show coming up after this two-minute timeout. Hopefully, we'll have Coach Roberts join us in the postgame show up here in the broadcast booth. We'll get you all the final statistics, hand out a bunch of awards, and we'll look ahead to Friday. Plus, we'll try to get you some final scores on the other two games before we sign off here on the Fan Sports Network, streaming on our website, kslsports.com, FlyFam TV. Actually, let's do a 60-second timeout, and Coach Roberts will join us right after we come back. Nets on Fire is the premier indoor basketball training facility in southern Utah with four full-size gyms and group and individual training packages available for every age and skill level. Nets on Fire can elevate your game. Hoop it, Nets! own property and want to rent it then you need the right team with 11 years of local experience a staff of over 25 employees and a 4.9 google rating aim to maximize your rental income and find quality tenants while keeping turnover low to increase your revenue and truly maintain your property learn more at redrockpropertymanagement.com as a local business owner it's important to get the word out about your business more people equals more revenue for you get your business in front of over 160,000 people in southern utah each week with st george news contact st george news today. We love giving back to our community, and over the years, we have provided vehicles for families in need, supported local charities, and helped train our first responders. Dealer Collision, your place for collision repair. Train first responders, and we are excited to sponsor local sports this season. Dealer Collision, your place for collision repair. Hey, welcome back, everybody, at the hangar. What an electric crowd tonight. I mean, truly standing room only tonight, and a fun one. Dixie pulls away late third quarter into the fourth quarter. They win 70 to 54. This is the Johnson Pediatric District post game show. Devin Dixon, Casey Winters, and Tyler Roberts hanging out with me now uh, here in the broadcast booth. Coach, congrats on the big win tonight. Undefeated 4 0 in region play. Take me through this one. I mean, tight one at the half. What would you tell the guys in the locker room? Let's start there. 
just slowing down. Um, we played a little rush tonight. We didn't get the ball movement that we normally get in our motion game. You know, Kyle was still getting anything he wanted, but we, we were a little bit rushed and just kind of slow down and then obviously pick it up a little bit defensively. Again, with Owen, he's going to go off. You just hope that he doesn't go off for 30, 35, 40, right? So we just tried to, tried to get a little bit better defensively. It was interesting. We talked about it a little bit this morning. We talked about it in pregame. Last year, you split with Snow Canyon. Both teams winning at home. But when Owen had 31, Jordy had 29. You guys beat him here. And then he only had 21 over their place, but they beat you and the supporting cast played better. Yeah, exactly. And that's, I mean, that's what you get in Region 9. Um, you get it, obviously, teams that are complete teams. So even if they're, let's say, they're star players, maybe having 20 or whatever, but he's also facilitating and getting other guys involved. And, and they, they did that tonight, too. I mean, is it Ensign Smith with 11 each? Like, that's, that's tough, too. Coach Roberts with us here. Uh, Limke was terrific. Usual game for Kyle. Double-double, you know, 23 points. Jordy scored a little bit more tonight. He was a little more aggressive. Talk about his game tonight. Yeah, I mean, he, he wanted to be a little more aggressive offensively. Um, and I think that was... I mean, whether it was him or just, you know, filling the game out a little bit. Brecken had a little bit of an off night, which then Jordan kind of needed to step in and get a little bit of scoring done. And so, um, you know, we just take what the defense gives us at this point. Yeah, Coach, so looking at uh, for Friday, right? No, I mean, you, you, you get to celebrate this one for a little bit, but a big game versus D Hills on Friday. What are you expecting in that one? The same thing, right? They're going to come in here and they're going to give us a tough, tough fight. We're going to have to make some adjustments and hopefully we can continue to get better. I think right now our, our biggest issue is rebounding and offensive rebounding. I mean, you give Owen four shots in one possession, he's going to score. And so if we can dial in and, and get better, Re uh, rebounding, then I like our chances. What, what do you do to work on that? I mean, they, they struggle with some rebounding too. It was interesting because Coach Ball told me rebounding was a key to the game, and you told me rebounding was a key to the game going into this one. Yeah, I mean, I think you just have to continue to talk about it, for one. Probably have to bring in somebody like Casey Winters that knows how to <laughs> rebound. <laughs> Get him in some I'll, practices. I'll give you three good possessions. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But seriously, like, we, you got to talk about it. We got to work on it. We'll have to break it down and do some skill development stuff and stop ball watching. Um, let's let Coach Roberts have the honor tonight. And you can uh, first pick the Hurst Ace Hardware player of the game for you guys. You're going to give it to Lemke, you're going to give it to Jordan tonight. Or Whiteauer, he had a great game too. Yeah, I, I mean, Kyle's Kyle. We're, I expect that from him every single game. So I, I'd probably go with Logan. Um, I had a good little conversation with him and knew that the baseline drive was open all night long, and he actually did that, and he, he did it. it. Yeah, and, and so for me, especially kind of, you know, last game wasn't his best game, and I love that. That's that's what I love. I love talking to a guy after game like, dude, don't worry about it. You come back next game, but I want you to work on two different things, and one was driving baseline. He's too big and strong, and he has a great left hand, and he can go up and under, so that that's a whole aspect of the game that I love, right? Just coaching, and then a kid that's coachable and comes in and does that tonight, so all props to, to Logan for, for doing that tonight. And we go back to the first, I think, three out of the first four flyer possessions. Reverse lane, reverse lane, yeah, reverse yeah. lane. Like on awkward. the baseline drive. So, right. Good call. Your first day Sarwar player of the game tonight, Logan Whiteauer. What about the playmaker play of the game brought to you by AWP? Is there a play that resonates when you guys start to pull away there in the second half? I mean, if, they, don't, if, if, if Kyle would have dunked it on Logan, that would have been a good one, but he went for the layup instead. Um, I will probably give that one to Jordan, the one that he came around the corner there and kind yeah, of jumped nice in the air, finish. faded a yeah. little bit off the glass. It reminded me of last year when he had the one over Owen. Yep. And of course that wasn't over Owen this time, but it was a tough, it's a tough little, oh, this is it right here. Yeah, here we go. Little yeah. change, yeah. Getting in the paint, just a tough shot. Yeah. 20 tonight for J-Rob. There's your Appliance Wholesalers Plus playmaker play of the game. Not an easy shot to hit. Uh, a little lucky. Did you ever hit that shot? <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> I would have probably just dribbled it out of bounds. <laughs> hey, how fun is this Flyer team to coach? You're taking everybody's shot week in, week out, game in, game out, and you guys continue to get it done. Yeah, it's a blast. And that's what I keep telling them. I mean, I've seen this every every day in practice. Just enjoy it because, really, it's, as you guys know, it's gone, like, so fast. And so right now, I'm really trying to just slow down, take it all in, enjoy every moment, and Hopefully the scoreboard at the end of the night is is what it is, but we just got to continue to love each other and, and make some memories. 
Coach Tyler Roberts, Coach, thanks Thank for you. stopping by. Victorious thanks, night. Guys. Flyers win it by 16. Uh, we'll take another timeout when we come back. We'll get to some other awards. We'll run down all the final statistics here in our Johnson Pediatric Dentistry postgame show. Stay with us on the Fan Sports Network. Everyone loves local sports and, of course, loves ice cream. And the best ice cream on the planet is Handel's Homemade Ice Cream. Open late every day of the week with dozens of delicious flavors. So after your favorite team wins, head over to Handel's to celebrate with locations in St. George, Layton, and Woods Cross. Need an appliance or two? AWP's got you. Check out the remodeled, expansive showroom highlighting the cafe series with colors like matte black, matte white, and modern glass. Make your kitchen stand out. Come see the local boys at AWP across the freeway from the Bloomington Walmart. Red Rock Real Estate has over 200 professional realtors in the St. George area that specialize in the local market. Whether you're buying your dream home, looking for an investment property, or want to sell your home for the highest amount, the Red Rock Real Estate team is here to assist you. Get started now by visiting redrockrealestate.com. Did you know that St. George News has a new app? Download the St. George News app today and stay up to date on everything happening in Southern Utah. Get instant notifications on news, weather, sports, and more. Download the app today and get your local news now. Or waxes. Don't forget, with every wash, get 10 cents. Scooters Coffee and Hurricane is the best. It's ready. Back live, Johnson Pediatric Dentistry post game show. The Coach Casey winners. I'm Devin Dixon. It's been our Boulevard home game of the week, and uh, we got another great slate on Friday night. We'll get to that in a minute. We'll get you some final scores. But what, what resonates from what you heard from Coach Roberts? I mean, it really truly sounds like he's loving coaching his team up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this is a year that he's looked forward to for a long time, and I know everyone is invested, and, you know, they're taking it one game at a time, and they got a bigger goal in mind, just like, you know, the other 30 teams in 4A, but you know the Flyers, they, they go about their business the right way. They do what they do, and and uh, they don't they don't change, right? They they have a system, they run it, they trust each other, and that's why they're so hard to beat. Tip of the cap to Snow Canyon. You'll see some highlights for our streaming audience as we'll hand out a couple more awards. We got final statistics as well, ready by Scooters Coffee. Let's do the uh, the statistics first. Individual scoring. Uh, 23 for Lemke, 20 for Roberts. I had Whiteauer for 18, but the scoreboard here in the building had 17, so I might have given him an extra point somewhere. Five for Damon Myers, two for Brecken Robinson, and two for Tyson Forsey. And I think Forsey's probably, as we get to the awards now, our Jimmy John, or excuse me, our Jersey Mike sub of the game. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and Tyson, you know, he, he fulfills that role better than any player you could ask. He just does a good job. He comes in and he just does a little bit of everything. And, and there's going to be nights where he's a double-digit scorer, and there's going to be nights where he scores two points. But he's always going to rebound. He's always going to play defense. He's going to guard guys like Owen Mackey, and he's going to guard guys, um, you know, like Nash Schroeder or Griffin Shepard. Um, and he just comes in and, and gives you everything that he's got and, and does a really good job. And that's a situation where you don't consider your first sub any sort of a drop-off from your starters. Yeah. He, he could easily be in the starting lineup. A sub above. Jersey Mike stopped by a local location. Proud sponsor of Region 9. And the sub of the game, Mr. Tyson Forsey tonight. Uh, the Scooters Coffee stats for Snow Canyon tonight. 11 for Dre Smith. 11 for Damon Inns. Coach Roberts was complimentary of the uh, supporting cast. 27, which was a game high for Omac tonight. Omac, he went for 27. 13 in the first half. 14 in the second half. Kelch had three, Aloha had two in the uh, 70 to 54 loss. Yeah, and I thought the Warriors did a good job. I mean, like I said, in, until about midway through the third quarter, they, I mean, it was blow for blow, and they did a good job, and I thought guys like Dre Smith and Trey Kelsch and Damon Entz did a good job. But like, like we mentioned, they just had that little cold spurt about halfway through the third quarter that they couldn't quite overcome, and the Flyers, you know, extended that lead and, and uh, dug the hole just deep enough that the Flyers can or the Warriors couldn't get out of it. I know there's one college coach, Andrew May, that had to love what he saw from Lemke and Roberts tonight. 43 combined. <laughs> Roberts probably had right around 10 assists. Lemke had right around 10 rebounds. Both probably had close to double doubles tonight. I don't have the official assists or the final stats on rebounds, but it felt that way, didn't it? Yeah, and and you know, you you love seeing that and and having a there's couple an guys assist right there from J Rob come in and contribute right away and and you know they have the chemistry they played with each other for a long time and 
you know, definitely, you know, the, the two guys that you can you can typically count on for the Flyers, you know, Jordan Roberts. Coach mentioned, you know, Brecken Robinson didn't have his night, um, you know, saddled with foul trouble a little bit, but, you know, don't expect him to have very many nights like that. And, you know, Logan Whiteout, this is a, a very, very dangerous team because you have six guys that can go off and you have three or four guys that when they go off in the same game, the Flyers are going to be very, very difficult to beat. You know, we, we do our Region 9 rivals every Thursday. Last Thursday, we asked if it was going to be the Flyers going undefeated or not, and you and Ben were both split. One of you said yes, one of you said no. Still a lot of games to be played, but it's going to take a really good performance yeah. for somebody I mean, to knock I, off I, Dixie. I, I'm going to double down. I mean, I said on last Thursday that they would, and I still think that. I mean, I think the, the Flyers are just that much better. You know, we saw a great fight from Pineview where they played really well. We saw a good performance performance from the Warriors tonight. Um, I, I think the war, the Flyers are going to run the table in Region 9 this year. Dixie wins it tonight by 16, 50 to 54. And uh, let's get you the Nets on Fire finals from the other games. Uh, Crimson has won tonight. Uh, they beat Hurricane 76 to 64, 12 point lead. Last report, we had the Pineview Panthers up 52-38. That was at the end of third. I haven't seen a final on the Pineview game, but it looks like Pineview was cruising towards a victory. Yeah, it's maybe maybe a little closer than we thought in that Crimson uh, Hurricane game, but you know Crimson doing a good job, kind of keeping themselves on pace. Uh, you know, looking forward to a couple rematches on the second second uh, time through, um, and then you know obviously another big matchup between you know Dixie and Desert Hills coming up Friday. Desert Hills has been shooting the ball extremely well, um, and it's going to take you know a, a 12, 15 three pointer night from a team to to knock off the. Fall. And, you know, they've already shown us once this season against Cedar. They knocked down 17 threes. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see if the Thunder, many of them were here tonight. Saw Coach Allred here. You know, if they can come in and, uh, you know, knock off the, the Flyers here in the hangar. Yeah. Again, uh, our look ahead brought to you by Handles Homemade Ice Cream. And uh, Friday night, uh, double the fun. We got two games on the live stream for you. Radio coverage. Uh, we'll start with... Uh, the, the Dixie Desert Hills game, but we'll get you back and forth, some, kind of some comprehensive wraparound coverage on the radio side, but on the fansportsnetwork.com, kslsports.com, you'll have both those games on a Friday night. C C Crimson. Uh, Pine View, that's a big one. That's a big one. That, that, that is a big one. That's going to be um, another one that, you know, definitely is going to leave its mark in the RPI and the race for the region title. That's going to be a huge game for both those teams. So the schedule, Pine View at Crimson. Uh, I'll be over there with Ben Lindquist. Uh, Desert Hills, Dixie, uh, Caden and Connor will have the call on that game. The other game will be the Snow Canyon Warrior team trying to bounce back against the Hurricane Tigers. That'll be at the jungle at SC on Friday night. Yeah, good slate Friday night. Pick a game, go watch some high-level basketball anywhere here in St. George Friday night. Uh, final thoughts on here we go on a January 17th. I mean, the storyline before the season was it's Dixie's region to win. It still looks that way. I, I believe so, and I think when you when you look across the state, you know, we're always kind of peeking in on, on Leighton Christian. We're peeking in on Provo. We're peeking in on uh, Ridgeline, Green Canyon, some of those teams. You're on the model. Bear River got a little something <laughs> yeah, going on. They're, they're, they're playing well, and I think they all start region tonight. So I think Bear River was at Ridgeline. Going to be interesting to see how that one shakes out. Um, you know, uh, st obviously still a lot of ball to be played, but, you know, we're expecting a, a really good tournament up at Utah Valley this year, and, uh, you know, going to be interesting to see who can stay healthy. Going to be interesting to see, you know, who has their 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 full squad at the end of the season to make that postseason push for the state title. Yeah, I don't have any scores, but in, in Region 11, it was Skyview at Logan, Green Canyon at Mountain Crest, and Ridgeline at Bear River tonight. So yeah, those and that Logan team, I, I, I'm telling people right now, I, I've seen them play. They, Jordan Childs is good. Yeah, and they're a young team that, you know, as sophomores, all played varsity as juniors. They got a little bit better. Now most of them are seniors. Logan is a very good team. They have length across the, the front line. Uh, they're going to surprise a lot of teams. That's a team I would not sleep on to make a deep run into the 4A state tournament. 43 combined between Limke and Roberts tonight. Wide hour, great performance. In fact, coach named him as the Hurst Ace Hardware player of the game for the Flyers. Pretty easy to go with Owen Mackey as the Hurst Ace Hardware player of the game tonight. He did have the game high 27 in the loss, 70 
to 54. Uh, the AWP playmaker play of the game, we went with that falling acrobatic uh, kiss, off kiss off the off window. J-Rob, Here, here's the uh, Appliance Wholesalers Plus playmaker play of the game. Again, brought to you by the boys, Jesse and Shane at AWP. Roberts is gonna tuck it, fade away, and knock it down. Ooh, that was high off the glass. Yeah, with a little soft kiss. Uh, our Jimmy, uh, Jimmy John's highlight of the week. Maybe that's a top nominee yeah. as well. Yeah, that could be right there. We'll have there. to check in on the other games, and uh, we'll get another one posted on the fan. Make sure you like the fan Instagram page for our Jimmy John's highlights of the week, and then every month we'll have the voting going and catered lunch for the entire program of the winning team. So fun little promotion we've got all the way through basketball season with Jimmy John's. Really thank our post-game sponsor, Johnson Pediatric Dentistry. Uh, all of our sponsors that get us in and out of breaks and on the air and on the video live stream as well. Again, two more live streams coming your way on a Friday night. Mm -mm -mm. How about Crimson hosting Pine View and Dixie and Desert Hills? Should be a fun Friday night. We've got you covered right here on your home for Region 9 basketball, the Fan Sports Network. Uh, for Caden, for Cannon, for Sebastian, for CC back in the Finley Studios, for Coach Casey Winters, I'm Devin Dixon. Where Dixie's won it, undefeated in region play, and they get the job done 70 to 54, the final on the Wilkinson scoreboard. We'll see you on Friday night, everybody. Want more high school hoops coverage? Tune in tomorrow from 7 to 9, and then in the afternoon from 4 to 6 on the Fan Sports Network. We'll have a lot more reaction to the games tonight, and it'll be a game day tomorrow. Don't forget, right here on the Fan Sports Network, that feud on 15. Utah Tech going up to the eight yes. back to take on the T-Birds. <laughs> That's going to be a good one. I, I know SUU struggling a little bit, trying to get one. Always room for our, our Region 9 guy, Brock Felder. Yeah. Seems like he's always popping up with a highlight dunk or block. So going to be a, a good battle, you know, of, of I-15. Uh, definitely going to keep our eye on that one. Yeah, we'll have Coach Cheater on uh, about 7.30 tomorrow morning. And Coach Judkins will join us on the program in the morning drive at 8.15. So we'll hear from both sides getting you ready for that game up in Cedar City tomorrow night. And don't forget the win. Women, SUU at Utah Tech at the Burns Arena tomorrow night. So all the girl dads out there, you might be going to the Burns hey, tomorrow night. That, that squad's a fun team to watch. We've been over to a couple games. They can shoot it. Yeah. They're, they're fun to watch. Just more local sports tomorrow. Utah Tech, SUU, rivalry game. And then Friday, we got that doubleheader. We'll see you later. Good night from the hangar where Dixie wins it 70-54. to 54.